So you guys adapted this from uh, the James Patterson novel. I, like a lot of the characters are different, and like the general story is different. How did you go about figuring out what to what to keep and how to adapt it? Uh, yeah, I think one of the issues was that the book took place in Africa. On this, you know, it took place in Africa, and so we were asking ourselves up front, like, how do we, for you know. An American audience jumping in to this show. How do we create, you know, a, a more kind of relatable? We, we wanted to see the animals, exist, you know, kind of starting to act abnormally in a much more familiar environment, which is why we created the Los Angeles side of things. We also, there was not. We really wanted to do, create this Mitch character, this veterinary pathologist who was, you know, really understood animal behavior science behind it as it was turning, you know, south being able to follow that sort of forensic thread it was a two of the major changes. And, and the book had a spectacular hook. The animals are fighting back, as it were. Um, and yet we didn't want the experience of watching the show to be spoiled if you had read the book. And so the first time we talked to James Patterson, he was like, I get it. The book is there. It's not going anywhere. Tell a different story. Take the, some of those characters. And so a lot of it has been trying to be to honor the themes and, the, and the, sort of the tone of his book, and yet to tell a different version. Yeah. So then, one of you guys have... So one of you guys have a thing against cats? <laughs> <laughs> He's a cat lover like and the, I'm not. It seems like the first episode, at least, there's a lot of cats going crazy. Well, you know, there's a fair amount of people that get creeped out by cats. <laughs> and we thought, let's play into that. But as you see by the end of the second episode, dogs get brought yeah, into the yeah. mix as well. And the whole animal kingdom is going to have their day in court on, uh, on this show. All right, and then what's the, the cats in the tree? Was that any homage to the the birds or anything? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. It was, uh, we, th that movie was an inspiration. Which, by the way, was the creepiest scene when we first see the cats up in the tree. It's awesome. funny. There seems to be a lot of people, like, we were creeped out by it. And then there's people that thought it was, like, laughably silly, which I guess is another way of reacting to the same thing. Like, things that scare you, you have to laugh at them to sort of, like, become like that. They're creepy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, by the way. So, do, do you guys have like an overall arc where we find out what's happening by the end of the season, or yes. is it open to more seasons? Or I think the answer is yes on both. And, and the, well, the exciting thing about the first season, genuinely, is we've both worked on serialized shows before. And, you know, sometimes you know you, there's that thing of really wanting to step it out and really take your time. This thing cooks. It the big stuff happening in these 13 episodes. Big kind of. Developments, revelations, and the problem spreads in an exciting way. Do you like working in that shorter format of doing only like 13 episodes as opposed to something longer, doing a normal like 20 something episode thing? A, a lot for that reason that you get to kind of, you know, just jam it in there. You know that like, hey, we got 13 episodes and we won't be back for, you know, another year. Let's just like, let's just kind of take maybe what could have been 22 episodes worth of story. Jamming into 13, it's so much more fun. I think it's so much more fun as an audience member, too. Yeah, there's no there's no sag. You know, when you're doing 22 episodes is a marathon for both the audience and for the storytellers, and there's no, there's no mile where you can take it easy in the race. You know, there's no, like, oh, I'll walk this mile and then I'll start running again. It's just, there's no filler. Are there any Which characters? Oh, sorry, are there any characters that have changed as a result of casting, or, or, or like when you look at the cast, you're like, I need to change this because we want this person, or how did the casting work, and, and do you write more towards the I actor don't think, now? So I don't think that the... We wrote a pilot, and then we started the casting process, and in some of the instances, the actors who we hired were very much like, oh, that's what we pictured in our mind, and in others, they were not quite as much, and so inevitably... And this is a lesson we've learned from other shows. When it's really working well, the actor and the and the role sort of blend. You're not really asking the actor to do something that's so far outside of who they are, but you're you are, but you're not asking for them either. And so, definitely, some of the characters 
and at the same time, some of the chemistry that just naturally exists between actors, you start to write more towards that. So some of the character relationships changed a bit after the casting process. So there seems to be a trend in the last uh, three or four years of a lot of shows that are either like sort of in the days type, there's a play, zombie play, there's a, uh, you know, an actual plague play, a uh, vampire play, and now this, you know, the animal play, so to speak. Uh, what do you view as the reason for that? What, what makes that interesting and why is that happening now? I, I, I think... I think popular entertainment often I'm, I'm coming up originally with the concept that popular entertainment reflects the times I'm not. Obviously I think popular entertainment reflects the times and I think we are all terrified of terrorism, frankly. Like I think a lot of the I think a lot of the popular entertainment is sort of like America post 9-11 realized that we're vulnerable in a way that is frightening. And I think all of these shows are, in one way or another, and movies are a way of processing that fear. So, as these uh, these animals are getting more and more intelligent, how do you pace that out? Because did it did the dog actually knock on the door? <laughs> <laughs> We yes. spent the entire time waiting for you guys to get here talking about, about this dog. Everyone was like fascinated. Did, did that it, dog it actually knock on the door? It wanted, it wanted <laughs> in. It, it didn't like stand on its legs. <laughs> yeah, no. So how, how do you figure out how how to increase that how intelligent? intelligent are? Because you don't want to make them too intelligent too fast, and then yeah. I would say watch the show. <laughs> although that would be like a, that would be a, a glib answer. We were we have tried to remain very mindful of. What pushes too far? What what begs too much credibility? And animals are shockingly bright. Like they really are. Penguins made for life. Like there's so much what we consider to be only human behavior reflected back in the animal population. And so all of the animal behavior, all of the sort of emergent, adaptive, physical and mental behavior of the animals is all based in reality. So we just, like, and we've learned more about animals than, you know, than we ever would have thought we been. Doing this show has been an education for us and the, the writing staff. And so everything is kind of pushed to the edge, but we, we recognize that there's a line, and if you cross the line, it, it will be. You'll let us happen. know when we finish. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to let us know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.